Oh boy, it's hard to try to make this video. This is just a follow-up to yesterday's video. By, by the, in, in, I'm going to touch on a few other things surrounding this. By the time my video uploaded yesterday, John Crump had already talked to Lawrence DeMonico and basically verified what I had said, what my thoughts were uh, in my video. And he brought up another point, though, about the costliness of, of fighting the Fed on this. And I want to touch on that, and then I want to touch on bump stock slide fire having a patent and how that th this is similar to the scenario that they had back when they started producing bump stocks. Um, and then uh, whether the tack con and the rare breed, if there's patent infringement there, uh, I'll start there. I don't know. I've seen this talked about in the comments on videos before. The only thing I would think is, is if there was patent infringement between TACCON and, and Rare Breed, that we'd have heard something more about it by now. And I'll just say, like, if Rare Breed was infringing on TACCON's patent, I would support TACCON 100%. I, I don't think that there is, but I don't know that. If anybody has any evidence to that, I'm, I'm happy to hear it. I'll appreciate the information. Now, moving on to uh, slide fire, like slide fire, uh, did, did this with patent infringers on bump stocks and once they were able to defend their patent and get these infringers out of the way for the most part they produced the best bump stocks ever ever uh, if you're familiar with the standard run-of-the-mill right-handed cheesy bump stock these things were rattled around they weren't real tight tolerances on your AR and the way you engage those was they, they locked into a slot on your buffer tube. And when you turned the bump stock on, it was unlimited travel. And if you pointed your gun down one handed, no support hand involved, your rifle fell right out of your bump stock. They were not ideal at all, but they produced the slide fire MOD, which was basically the stock, the grip and everything, but it didn't lock in on your buffer tube. It had its own separate adjustable stock and it, it locked in in the grip and there was a separate channel. You turn it one way and it's stationary. You, you spin it around the other way and it's within about an inch travel channel back and forth, which made it easier for people trying to learn how to bump fire too, I think. But uh, it was no problem. It was great. It, it felt right. You could take the finger shelf off and, and just put an insert in there to fill the area. And it was like a normal rifle. I doubt we would have seen a slide fire MOD if they had to worry about patent infringement. I hope you guys are following what I'm saying here because if you want better products, if you want research and development from the people willing to take the risks, uh, you, you have to be pro-patent rights. Or you have to hope all these other Mickey Mouse companies are gonna defend their product against the federal government uh, and uh, not care about property rights. It's, it's a slippery slope and I hope you guys can follow what I'm saying here because Rare Breed's already said we plan on bringing an AR-10 forced reset trigger, an AK forced reset trigger, uh, uh, stuff for like the 22 long rifle platforms that, you know, I realize we can make like 22 work with the forced reset trigger with the sear trip and all that kind of stuff, but needless to say, the point is, is you'd have something designed more around that. and. I, I don't doubt that we haven't seen some of this stuff up to this point because of patent infringement. I remind the ATF. Um, I think that if we lost rare breed in this fight, that the fight's essentially lost in, for the most part. I don't doubt that Second Amendment organizations wouldn't file suits if people started getting uh, picked up for these triggers, but it'll be just like the bump stocks five years later almost, and we can't get the Supreme Court to get off their ass. You've got contradictory uh, con you know, decisions made in this, this court here and that court there, and you know, live, people live and die while they're deciding what privileges you get today or next week or next year. That's how it'll end up with forced reset triggers because these other entities that have supposedly gotten cease and desist, they could file suit against, against the Fed and try to defend their product. They're not. Now, it doesn't mean they won't, but from what I can tell, they're not. 
Only rare breed, the ones that had the balls to bring it to market have immediately upon getting the cease and desist, they went to, to fight against the Fed on it. They didn't stop selling their triggers. You go on BDU's website, you go to Big Daddy Unlimited today and look for a wide open trigger, it just talked about what's coming. Well, that's, that's all fine and good, but uh, I don't see anything. And uh, th that should be telling to people, okay? Not that wide open triggers aren't available through some of the resellers, but I have a feeling those resellers, that, that situation's different, but I don't know enough. So it, it's difficult sometimes when you just want something, you say, well, the hell with it. I, I just want this or I want that and they're cheaper over there. Well, I imagine that uh, rare breed triggers would be able to create cheaper triggers for us if they weren't having to spend a bunch of money fighting people that, that they, they shouldn't have to fight the Fed on this or any other private organization or company, but you know, the Fed aside, like they shouldn't have to be doing all this and people shouldn't be infringing on their patent. All right. So again, I hope everybody can take all this into account. And the last thing I want to mention is Rare Breed said that the, the, the cost of this, right? Like, I don't talk to anybody from these companies. Most conversations I have are in social media and comments, right? I don't mind giving money to these GoFundMes and stuff like that, but I don't want to set up a GoFundMe. I don't want to be responsible for something. I don't, and, and, and this would be something I would think you have to get involved with the, the company and whatnot. So, if somebody out there has a means to accomplish that, I think that that should be like, as far as the gun community goes at this point, like, let's not wait for things to get worse. Let's not wait for them to say the hell with it. We'll just stop. You know, this is me speaking hypothetical. Like I have no idea what anybody's doing, but you know, Reverie could just say the hell with it. We'll just stop making this and we'll go sue for patent infringement against all these other companies because of the damages that they've caused and anybody else who ever makes one. And, and oh well, and then where are we? Then where are we? Where are we? <laughs> you know, uh, now it's not anybody else's responsibility to fight their fight, but it's, it, I think that there's a common interest here, right? And uh, I would like, I'd like to see something like that happen. I think it would be useful. I think that it would be in our, in our self-interest to defend, help defend the guys who are defending us. And as it stands right now, Rare Breed's the only one fighting for us to keep this stuff. And it's also why I would say that if you want a forced reset trigger, do not go with anything but the guys who brought it to market first, uh, which is Rare Breed triggers. Like, Supporting Wot Wot isn't fighting the Fed on this, from what I can tell. They aren't doing a damn thing. So I understand the eagerness to want all these things out there, but not at the price of of violating property rights and ultimately the price of our own destruction in, in regards to these even being available to the public. But anyway, hope everyone can understand this. Uh, it's a little early, I didn't have a lot of time to think this through, but I figured if I don't make it now, I might, I might end up going a few more days before I think about doing it again. Uh, have a good one. I hope everyone's doing good, and I will catch you later.